All right, good day and welcome to the second class under the Earn More Money as an Employee program. My name is Jimmy Tewe, and I'm excited that you are joining us today uh, for the second session. Um, I trust that you learned a bit um, from the first session. Um, we are a bit behind schedule, I apologize about that. However, we will ensure that you know we're able to cover up um, in the next um, few days to weeks. Um, we had just a few technical challenges. But you are welcome to the employee um, self-employed model under the Earn More Money as an Employee program. And I trust that today you're going to learn a lot from um, this program. Now let's get right into it. Now, the objective for today's program, again, for the course is to introduce you to practical steps you can take to earn more as an employee. We've explained that the premise for designing this program is that most employees are limited to their salaries with regards to an income. But the truth about it is that your income can exceed your salary. So how do you position yourself to earn much more beyond your salary on a consistent basis? And we said that the models that can enable you, if you understand them, that can enable you to achieve this easily. Um, so specifically to this session is focused on strategies you can adopt to increase your income beyond your salary by becoming self-employed. We spoke about that last week, um, last time that we had this meeting that um, we, 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 we had four um, kind of specialized employees, you had a basic specialized employee, we said that in the last class, but this class is focused on um, the employee self-employed. And I'm going to share through more light on this as we go along in this uh, program today. In other words, how do you earn a salary and at the same time run a side hustle, that's what we call it, that earns you additional money so that your income at the end of the day is salary plus income from side hustle, all right? How do you run that effectively? A lot of people have complaints, they've tried it, it, it failed. How exactly do you ensure that it succeeds? We're going to talk about that today. So with that um, introduction, let's look at this in a bit more of detail. Now, again, to remind you that the financial model we're using for this program is the cash flow quadrant propounded by Robert Kiyosaki, and where the four quadrants that basically determine how income flows to every individual, all right? Um, if you remember, we said the cash flow quadrant has four quadrants. We have the employee quadrant, we have the business owner quadrant, we have the self-employed quadrant, we have the investor quadrant. We said for the employee quadrant, right, here you have a job, we spoke about that last week, and we shared a few strategies you can adopt, seven of them, that even as an employee within your own organization, how you can actually strategize and end more. I hope um, somehow you've been able to begin to explore options, particularly the concept of the kind of company that you work in, all right? So that is the employee um, quadrant. The other quadrant is the self-employed quadrant, where you own a job. The first one, you have a job, but this one, you own a job. So you literally work for yourself. I'm going to throw more light on this as we go along today. The third quadrant is the business owner quadrant, where you own a system and people work for you. So that's the major difference between the self-employed and the business owner, right? In one, you're working for yourself. In the other one, people are working for you. That's the business owner. And the last thing, which is almost the highest, you can say it that way, is the investor quadrant, where money works for you. You literally sleep and wake up, and you wake up, and there's much money. That's really, that's where you have people that have invested in shares, people that get dividends at the end of the year, get um, a share base, or maybe being on the board of an organization, things like that. That's what you want to begin to think about in the long run, all right? So this is Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant, and that's the basis for what we're talking about. It's important that you don't just have a speaker that will come and talk and just, you know, give you some nice words. This is a practical program and it's built around this model. Again, we said that the flow of income, usually the lowest is the employee where you have a job and then to the self-employed. So what we're going to be looking at today is a bit more intense. And therefore, I can say this to you up front, it's going to be more challenging to run this. Um, it's not going to be the regular life you're going to have, but let me say this to you. If you want to earn more money, someone says if you want something different, you have to do something different, okay? So we're going to take you into a bit of detail around that um, today. Uh, so the employees have employed, then you move to the business owner, and then eventually, from running your business, you create systems where you're able to set money aside, and you can now look for vehicles you can invest in that can bring you consistent return on a periodic basis. So this model is designed to enable you to understand what it means to be self-employed and how you can uh, become self-employed and still keep your job and earn your salary at the same time. I'll say this to you that for me personally, that while I was working in an organization that actually ran this model, albeit at a little, uh, in, in a smaller way, but I realized that it helped me in many ways, which I would throw more light on as we go along today. I have spoken to people, I know people, I done trainings for banks and several organizations, and from time to time, when I ask people to introduce yourself, and the beginning of the training, you will find people that are bold enough to say, I work with this organization, but I also run the business from importation to agriculture to fashion to different things and all. 
those are people that are self-employed, okay, in other words, that are working, and yet they're also, you know, um, using their extra time to earn more income. So the model of this credit is called the employee self-employed model, and that's what I'm going to be looking at a bit of detail today. Now, this uh, the general definition of being self-employed is working for oneself, I've said that already, as a freelancer or as the owner of a business. So take, for example, you um, work in, a, in, a, in an organization and you're in the risk management function or, or the investment function, but your friends say to you that, you know what, I'm running my business and I need someone to advise me about investment. So you decide that, you know what, beyond um, what I'm doing in my organization, I'm going to offer business advisory services to some other person um, while I'm working, but during my free time, then what you have done is that you have now become self-employed or you are now mixing this also with being employed in an organization, all right? So we are saying that in the context of this model that now, understand it's a different, I've said it before, that being self-employed and running the business are different under this model. Once it's about running the business oneself, so you are the only employee, as it were, under self-employed, while the other one speaks about creating systems that work even in your absence, all right? That's business ownership. Okay, so one of them is that you are the only employee, you work for yourself essentially, but the other one is you create systems in particular for people and technology where even though you are not present, business can still go on. In other words, we can say that a self-employed person who works in 9 to 5 in, in Lagos where I live and all that, that's an 8 to 7 or 8 to 6 and all that, but in the context, general context, it's a 9 to 5 and also in 5 to 9 for their total income. So what you do is that when you close, you don't close from working, essentially you're saying that, can I make money after work, all right? And that's your weekends, that's your when you get home, one, two hours, you can invest that into a side hustle and that way you're making more money. So maybe I know how to make clothes and all that. So when I get home, I know people, for example, that big. And what they do is that um, they bake for their colleagues so that their colleagues are the ones paying for their birthdays and all that. So when they get home, they wait till about 1 a.m. They sleep from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m., wake up and they're back to work and that doesn't affect their regular work. Now, let me say something to you that the, the idea behind this model is not to affect the kind of work you're doing. And unfortunately, some people don't understand how to run this and so it sort of affects, you know, um, the way that, um, I mean, that, that, that work is done. So at the end of the day, they are making money but they are they are not performing well at work. What I'm going to try to do is to even help you to learn how to be able to balance this. There's a slide that talks about how to balance this such that you are able to work effectively and at the same time, you are also able to be self-employed. Now, these are the things you need to know. The key resources a self-employed employee optimizes, uh, they are, that's, these are the keys to balance for me. The first one is time. Again, we said the 9 to 5 and we've spoken about the 5 to 9. Most people that I know close um, at a particular time, 5, 6, sometimes 8 o'clock and that's the end. Their, their primary desire at that point is to rest, to recover from work. And I'm, I'm a rest is important, don't get me wrong. But the rest in the weekend is just about rest. So all they do to be productive is between the nine to five hours. But what they don't realize is that you have to push yourself a bit more. No person who is great, no person who is rich, no person that's outstanding does what is regular. They always do what is extraordinary. So in terms of the time, what I'm saying to you is that they're going to earn more money as an employee self-employed, then you must be able to optimize your time. So you're going to have your 9 to 5, you also have what we call your 5 to 9. Not only that, you have skills. In other words, the skills you have are not only relevant in the office, but you have skills that either the ones you're using in the office, uh, and if there's a conflict, we'll speak about that before we leave, or you have additional skills that are not used in the office, but can be used outside. So for example, I used to be head of recruitment for a bank. However, I had speaking skills. So what I used to do those days was that my weekends I dedicated to speaking at, um, at events for organizations and all that. And that, there was no conflict for that in my organization because I wasn't doing that in the office. And that earned me more money beyond what I was doing in the office. So your time is one, your skills is the second one. The third one is basic equipment or technology, which is largely self-operated. So in other words, we're talking about, so in other words, you have equipment you have certain technology which you own, all right, and you are able to make this available. I'll give an example. I know people, for example, that have, um, I mean, bought equipment or um, rental chairs, canopies, and all those kind of things. And then during the weekend, they're able to deliver it themselves. Uh, some of them have a popcorn making machine and all that. And during the weekend, they're able to run that. You know, they have different things. And also, it's basically possession of um, a basic equipment or technology which you are able to run yourself. Okay, you have your cake maker, all the things you use for your business, but you are essentially running it yourself. Okay, so you have time skills, 
equipment or technology and lastly you have contacts some businesses are driven by contacts okay so for example maybe because of the kind of business you run where there's no conflict i keep mentioning that where there's no conflict you are able to leverage contacts maybe you have contacts that are not relevant really to the business so the job you're doing however they're relevant for the idea that you have all right you want to make sure that you're able to optimize this so this is the balance between time skills equipment or technology and then contact that enables you to become self-employed i'm going to explain this and how to apply this even as you uh, position yourself to earn more money as an employee self-employed now there are seven um, key phases in this employee self-employed cycle all right the first is that you need to have an idea every business is an idea um, based on an opportunity or something then you need to de-risk your idea i'm going to explain every one of them the third um, um, phase is you need to identify the requirements for the idea to become a reality so what time is required what resources are required and what business opportunity exists okay then you need to run a pilot and um, for that idea to see whether it works you review that you adjust and then you adopt so these are the seven steps again if you have the idea you de-risk the idea you identify the requirements in terms of time resources business opportunity you identify and you run a pilot of that idea and you review and based on your review you adjust and then once you are clear that the business is good enough you're able to adopt and run alongside your job you have on a weekly basis now this is just a schematic but i like a, 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 a certain um, portion of this the fact that there's a review um portion to it and that review is has actually a loop between the pilot and adjustment i'm going to explain all of this as we go along all right so let's start from the idea okay again every business opportunity is an idea all right and um, i realize for example that i'm working my company but people always need um food i know somebody that works in an oil and gas company i should realize in our, in our office that people wanted to eat healthy or drink healthy so what was available at that time was the usual uh, um, drinks that you had that had a lot of sugar were carbonated and people did not want to take that and people don't necessarily like water so what she did was that and when she got home she would go and she made a food um, uh, food juice maker and she would make some bottles she packaged it properly and she started selling to her colleague before you knew it people in the organization began to ask for it eventually she transitioned to a business owner and that's what she's running it as right now okay so but again it's always start with an idea so your foray into being self-employed will usually be um, driven by an idea which could be an opportunity you see like that lady or passion that you have uh, so you must first and foremost have an idea. Ideas is a rule the world, but the reality is that not every idea has been successful. And that's why I'm taking you through this because I know lots of people that you know see that oh there's money in a grip, so they go. I have friends that have lost money. I'm talking about millions of naira, all right, in business ideas simply because they did not risk business, they did not run the pilot, they didn't do what I'm about to teach you um, today in this program. So ideas rule the world, but the reality is that not every idea has been successful. So one of the things that will make this idea successful, we'll talk about it as we go along. It's definitely imperative that your idea makes business sense, and that's what is the big difference. A lot of people, somebody said, you know, are running a hobby in a business office, that's all, all right, they're not really running the business. So never forget that the essence of pursuing this idea in our own context is for profitability. Why are you running this program? You want to make more money. This is not a social enterprise. This is for, for profit, okay? So always keep it. So every idea you are considering right now must be for profit. That's the essence of this program. Maybe you want to do a social impact program. There's a different thing we can actually put together when that is concerned. But for the purpose of this program, it is for profit, okay? It is therefore if it therefore does not make business sense, then you should drop it or work on it to make business sense, okay? So when you start off with that, you must have an idea. Now, also in the concept of idea, what do you need to think about? Now, my first assumption is that you have thought through your idea. So you need to have signed on, I mean, I saw with a few of you, somebody says, I want to run a HR consultancy, which you can do, during your weekends for a small SME, you are able to say, well, Saturdays, I have a few hours and I can actually take up a business and on a week-to-week -week basis, I'm able to answer their HR challenges, you know, solve some operational things for them. And they pay me a little stipend. It might be a retainership. It might not be much. It might be 50,000 Naira every month. But let, let me say this to you. If you are able to do that, that is 50,000 Naira extra that has come in on a monthly basis, okay? So I want to uh, uh, assume, as I run through this program, that you have thought your idea well enough and you consider it viable for business. I also want to assume that somehow you have done some preliminary analysis to ensure that it will be worth your while to pursue it. It's very discouraging 
I have, I've coached people before, and to find out, you know, I mean, by the time I sit with them, I realize that many of them are not thought through what it is they want to do. If we don't address this at the beginning, it will be futile at the end of the day, okay? Now, in case you're not very sure about the viability of your business idea, we can run through all of that here. When we're doing the teleseminar that accompanies this program, we will discuss it further. But you can read um, a simple article. It's under entrepreneur.com. There's an article, there's a number that is there, 217563, all right? You can search for that and you can read about, I mean, the viability of your business idea and it gives you some ideas which you can use to test whether your idea is actually viable, all right? So if you do not now have an idea, you're just on this program, you will not profit from this. Go and look for an idea for you to optimize this program, all right? So now you have an idea. The next thing you want to think about is you want to de-risk your idea. What does that mean? The word de-risk is simply removing risk from your idea. Let me say this to you. For many reasons, business owners have a lot of faith in their ideas and believe that it will become profitable within a very short period of time. I'm reminded about when I was transiting for my job as a senior manager in a bank and I was going to start my business around career coaching. I had this business plan that was going to give me 22 million per annum profits. I'm telling you, I was very sure, but I remember speaking to one of my friends and shared the idea. He was just taking to the blogger and I saw this little smile at the corner of his mouth and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to prove you wrong. And it's like, yeah, you know, it's a good one, but have you not thought about maybe the business will not make profit in two years? And I'm like, God forbid, no, it's going to work and all that, all right? Because every business owner is usually very optimistic. Now, optimism must be balanced with realistic, uh, being realistic, okay? And so you need to de-risk your idea. Um, in other words, as big and as possible your idea is, there are certain things that can make it fail. You want to identify those things and then that way you are able to address them, okay? So the ideal situation, um, I, I mean, um, this is the ideal situation. Most times you want to be profitable, you want to make all the money next week, tomorrow, right now, but it rarely ever happens that way. So many business owners will tell you that it takes time adjusting and forging on when it looks like it's not working before you arrive at success. Go and ask every damn booty, every or ten dollar, or every Bill Gates and, um, and every Warren Buffett will tell you about the challenges that they face in growing their business. So you have to be realistic. This um, this comes before even operating a pilot, okay? You have to de-risk your idea. However, it's important that you are as realistic as possible in your business estimations so that you can plan well accordingly, all right? So the process of de-optimisticalizing your idea is called de-risking, okay? This way, I, I, for example, I can tell you that if I de-risk my business, there are many things I will have avoided from the onset. I want to take you through very quickly a few things to think about when you're risking your idea. Now, in a typical pitch to investors, it's very common for business owners to sell up the potential of the idea and downplay the potential risk of the business. Now, interestingly, what they don't know is that most investors are first interested in the risks before the potential. You see, the reason why is because they realize that the risks are more likely to happen before the potential shows up. So they pay a lot of attention to this. In their mind, they are saying, can I invest? How risky is this business? The more we are able to contain the risk, the more likely the business is going to be profitable at the end of the day or to succeed. The less we can contain the risk, the more likely it's going to fail. So they are very aware of the risk. And for you as somebody thinking about being self-employed, you must consider the risk for the business. Now, I'm not going to again teach in, in a lot about the risk. We'll talk about that in the teleseminar, but you can also go to startupscore.com and there's a blog there and you can read about the risking your startup in five steps. Just five things that would enable you in that regard. Okay, I'm giving you all of this so that you can actually have materials to go and read. These are things that have helped me personally, help other people that I've known and they can help you also. So now you've de-risked your business, okay? You have removed it. Now the business you thought will bring $1 billion next week can give you $100,000 per month. Now that's a bit more realistic, okay? So what are the requirements to ensure that that $100,000 per month comes in, all right? Okay, um, let me share a quick story. I, I wrote here that my 11.2 million versus 500,000 naira story. When I was going to start my business, I had, like I said, this big idea that was going to give me 22 million per annum. And so I went around looking for investors, and that's what I wanted to do at that point in time to invest 11.2 million naira into the business to start up. And for some reason, people would say, Oh, wow, what a nice business uh, proposal. I, I like your business plan. It looks so, so legit, so tight. But they didn't drop. One narrow, one dollar, nothing ever, ever happened. But one day I sat down and I said to myself, what do I need to start? What do I need to run? By the time I was through, I came up with 475,000 naira. That week, I got an investor that gave me half a million naira immediately. I'm talking about about six years ago, okay? 
So again, you want to think about what is required. For example, as self-employed, you should not be thinking about buying an official car. You don't need that. The car you have is official enough to run from there. Okay? You want to think about what is the basic you require to start this business. You might start with a complimentary card. You might not start with a complimentary card. You might start, you know, with a new laptop. You might start with a, with a, a second-hand laptop. As long as it works, you need to start with what is required, all right? So, one key requirement you need to consider at this time is funding, okay? How exactly are you going to fund your, your, your self-employed enterprise, okay? Um, for example, what are the um, um, and raw materials required? So, for cakes, if you're going to make cakes, for example, I know somebody on this program is trying to run that kind of business and all that. What is required? You want to buy your mixer, you want to buy the flour, you want to buy, you know, throwing butter. What are, you have to be able to identify what is required. But more importantly, how would you fund this at this point in time. Now, it's important that you conservatively determine your best source of funding so that you don't put pressure on the business of inception. I know people that have said, oh, I want to run a self-employed um, enterprise and then go and buy a MacBook, all right, for 300 or 20,000 naira, okay? They even go and they get, uh, uh, I mean, a loan facility for it, which will pay about 12 months. Immediately, you have come under pressure without making, making one dime, all right? You want to ensure you don't put yourself under pressure at the onset. So my best advice is that as much as possible, get your best, your basic funding for your business from a portion of your salary. So if you earn a hundred thousand naira, you're going to put about twenty thousand naira or ten thousand naira per month separately. And after a while, you build it enough to be able to buy a laptop of sixty thousand, which you can now start with. Okay, that way you have your office laptop, which you are not allowed to use for your side hustle, but you have another laptop you can now use. All right. So this also helps to develop the habit of saving. Which is so for more. This is about funding, and there's another article on that entrepreneur.com, article 237926. All right, you can go read that a bit more. You can, you know, throw more light and help you in this regard. Now, the pilot is a test version of your business enterprise. The mistake people make is that they say, Oh, I'm starting next week, I'm excited. You know, maybe they want their first client and they go all out. But the truth about it is that your first client might be your last client. You've not thought about um, the pipeline for the business. You not, you know, run a pilot to see whether it will be acceptable because many times your pilot is usually your friend that says, let me go support what you are doing, okay? But your friend is not, you can't, you won't have enough friends to sustain a business or a side hustle, right? So you want to run a, a test version of a business enterprise. It can also be defined as a smaller version. So you have this big thing. Again, you don't want to invest all the money you have in the big thing. Do a small one and find out whether it works, whether it's feasible at the end of the day. A pilot allows you to prove your business idea before you invest heavily into it. So for some of you, you might need to do quite some investment. For example, you might want to say, I want to go and do a certification in the US or the UK that cost me about half a million naira, all right? But why get certified for something you might, that is not viable as a business, okay? So you want to run a pilot, find out whether people are even looking for that product or service, and then you can now say you want to invest in it. That's the beauty of what a pilot does for you. A pilot also helps you ascertain where the market for your business really is. And because sometimes you might find out that usually for most self-employed, they start within their common circle, all right? People that they are very familiar with. But after a while, even if you start that way, you make things for all your friends. After a while, I mean, you saturate that market and you now need new markets, okay? So the pilot enables you to identify where are the other areas. You can say, maybe run an advert, you're in Lagos, Nigeria, and run an advert in Abuja and see whether anybody is going to respond. Maybe put that on one of the online e-commerce platforms. And the response will let you know whether or not that um, product is uh, is being desired by people in that area. And that way you can know whether you can extend to that market or not. So a pilot helps you to ascertain where the market for your business really is so that you can optimize your resources. It also enables you to quickly identify the challenges you are likely to face. Now, some challenges you will face, you will overcome them. Some challenges are constants in the self-employed, I mean, uh, I mean, enterprise you're going to run. So you must be able to identify them and the pilot enables you to, on a small scale, identify those challenges and know how to handle them. I have a friend that was trying to run something and because of the nature of what she was doing, there was some regulation around that. If she had gone full blast, she would have been arrested. But what this enabled her to do was, when she came out a little, somebody said to her, you know, you need to go and get registered properly and all that. And that de-risked the business for her. I mean, when she ran as a pilot, all right? Also, for pilot, I want to recommend you run it with a time frame. So, for example, I left back in 2010, but in 2008, I made up my mind. In 2009, and for a period, about uh, for every three months, I would run my speaking engagement. I would go speak. 
and I tried to I partner with people that support people that were running trainings, and I was able to review my pilot on a consistent basis to know whether it worked or not. Okay, so I just said that now review your progress intermittently. So say to, my, say to yourself, all right, let me run it for the month of July. This is the beginning of the month of July. I mean, for those that are just running the program now, I will run it all the way to the end of August and review how much did I make out of this side side hustle. All right. Um, does it make sense? How do I adjust? We're going to talk about adjusting, uh, I think, in the next um, slide. So, one thing I'm also helping you is that many times, you know, you believe so much in your um, idea, your dream, get somebody else that can be um, a bit more realistic and can work with you, okay? So, get a review partner to be a part of it so that you can get a broader perspective on how feasible your idea um, really is. Now, once you're running your pilot, and you remember that the schematic I showed you earlier, the pilot and adjust works with review at the same time, okay? You want to make sure that you are adjusting as you're working the pilot. So once you're through with the pilot or while you're running your pilot, use the knowledge you gain to redesign how you want to start, okay? The idea behind it is that there are just phases where you make your idea more attuned to the reality of the market so that your time to success is shortened when you fully begin, okay? So I'm, I'm suggesting in a way that even though from July, August, you start, you know, and I want to encourage you, don't run this program and just let it go, all right? Do something about it, do something with it, okay? So, um, there are just phases where you make your idea more attuned. To, so, as you are coming aware of, um, becoming aware of the reality of the market, you are adjusting such that you are able um, to shorten the time to success where you fully get into this, all right? So, adjusting is where you cut off excess speculations and you align your projections, which then helps you have a better view of your short and long term profitability, okay? So, you run your pilot. I recommend that you, some pilots you can run, then finish, and then adjust, okay, and then review, which is the next phase we're going to talk about. But you can, so some of them, as you are running the pilot, you can be adjusting alongside, so that you're able to optimize um, that experience. And once, you, uh, I mean, while you're doing that uh, adjust, remember for the review, we said the review phase is more of an activity than a phase, okay? It's more of an activity than a phase. So what you want to do is that it's a loop. So while you're running your pilot and adjusting, you must consistently watch all that is going on and review to ensure your idea becomes more marketable. I want to recommend that as you're doing this, for example, take data down. Data enables you to track trends. So for example, and you, you can know maybe there are periods when there's more money that will come in at that period, so you can plan, you know, better. You can find out that maybe money comes from a particular kind of client or customer, you know, rather than somebody else. So data is very, very critical for the employees self-employed to run, okay? Um, review is a loop, and this means that this can be done several times. So again, you don't have to do it once. You keep doing it to ensure that you have identified the improvement opportunities and you in, in, incorporated them into the pilot before you start. Now, of course, avoid analysis paralysis, where you are now becoming a researcher rather than the business, you have your side hustle, all right? So at some point, you have to, you know, um, take the knowledge you have and take the first step, and then, of course, review as you keep going, even after you start the business. Again, every business, they have quarterly business review, half-year business review, annual business review. So review is something that um, enables um, profitability, optimizing profitability. So you must learn how to do this and utilize that in your own um, endeavor. We talked about the review. The next phase is the adopt. Now, at this phase, you are saying, I'm ready to go essentially, right? You are, you are fully set to begin running the employee self-employed model. Now, this is something I've done. I've really not spoken about how do you manage your time, you know, working, you know, at the same time and running yourself and your enterprise at the same time by yourself. The truth about it is, is that the pilot phase enables you. If you're able to run through your pilot, what you are doing is you are understanding your own realities and you're able to adapt your realities, okay, to uh, this enterprise or this model. So, I mean, we're going to talk about how to balance that a bit more, particularly when we're talking about it doing the 37, okay? Now, um, at this point, you have run your enterprise for a few weeks, you have de risked your idea, you've determined your requirements, and you're going to pilot, right? The next thing to do is to start. So, adopting is to start. So, I say, today I fully start as an employee, self employed, and I'm going to run, and every month I have a target of what I intend to, to make. So, maybe I earn 300,000 naira per month. I will earn 800,000 or 1.2 million. At the end of the month, my income will not be 1.2 million. My income will be 2 million because I will have 800,000 additional coming in for my side hustle or my own enterprise, okay? So, um, adopt your idea and start running it in your day-to-day -day activities. It's important that 
and I said you optimize your day. Your day does not end when the office ends, okay? You can actually make the most of the time beyond the day. Now, that's a question that maybe is coming into your mind. How do you balance the act? How exactly are you going to balance the act? It's never easy to run this model of being a specialized employee. I'm going to say this to you, I said at the beginning of this um, program, that um, if the moment you decided to say, I want to earn more, you're saying, I'm going to do beyond what every other person does. And therefore, it's not going to be, I mean, uh, a run in the park. Now, the more you become um, I'm skilled at this, the better and the easier it actually becomes, all right? So maybe at the onset, it might not be easy. However, you need to begin to start in that direction. Now, the major challenge you will face is that you still have to be responsible to your organization and deliver on your responsibilities while you are building your new enterprise. I think that this is where really um, personal effectiveness and time management, those are the two things for me that I see that the employees have employed a model requires, all right? So on one end, you need to learn how to maximize your time. Again, what are the things I must do? So um, now you are doing, you are now self-employed and when you're working as an employee, it means you're probably going to attend parties less. It means that you don't have as much free time as others, you know, so while they are playing, you are paying, and then when you play, they are ha going to have to pay, you know, eventually, all right? So I want to make sure that you have to balance the two. So the first um, perspective, thing to think about is your time. Optimize your time. Know that when I'm at work, I'm, at, I'm working. And then when I'm through with work, I end the office work and I'm able to focus on my own business. Of course, on days, you have to spend a few days extra, but don't let it become consistent because that actually blocks your capacity to earn more at the end of the day, all right? And lots of people struggle and give up once they conflict the face with balancing this responsibility, or responsibilities overwhelm them. So I, I try it with when I'm tired, I mean, I remember those days, Saturday I would sleep, but now you're telling me that Saturdays, I have to bake Saturdays, I have to go and, you know, uh, I mean, um, you know, sit down with some HR, so, some firm to do the HR, my Saturdays are now all taken, I don't have time to rest. Rest is relative, all right? Sleeping long does not equate rest. Rest basically means sitting down, you're able to plan your rest well, and you're able to, you know, maximize the time you're resting, okay? So you're going to have to become, I mean, a more effective with all those other things. Personal effectiveness is also something that, I mean, how do you manage the resources around you? So, for example, how do you optimize the internet technology that's around you such that, even though I'm self-employed, I don't have to have meetings with my client face-to-face -face every week. So, we, we meet once a month face-to-face. Every other one is a Skype meeting that we run. That is technology, and that way you don't have to enter traffic and try to get to the office every single time. You can run emails, you can use that to optimize you know, the experience, and that way you're still self-employed, but you're also running your um, job as an employee. All right, so the truth is that there are ways in which this can be handled. I've shared some of that with you so that you can deliver optimally at work and at the same time, you know, in the office. I know people that do this on a consistent basis, and you too, let me say that to you, you can actually do it. So um, let's look at how this can be done effectively. We're going to talk about that a lot more during the tele-seminar. Now, uh, the integrity question is something that, in, um, where I'll get into the end of this, so don't get tired at this point now. It's something a lot of people talk about, you know. Um, Jimmy, you said to me that um, I can run this side hustle, but my company probably has a policy, and I've said that there are a number of organizations have a portion of their policy which specifies certain limitations on their staff. They say, for example, if you're working in a company, you cannot do any other business. And that's pretty general and actually very unfair in most instances. I've I worked in HR for many years to so understand you know, the origin of where those things come out. I'll share that with you tonight. All right, they say you cannot work, you cannot do any business related to us. Then so um, in some instances, there's a limited place, that's what I said, of being involved in any business aside from their job while in the employment organization. Or sometimes they say, and there's a little on please on what type of business. So you cannot do the kind of business. And I would actually advise that as much as possible, being self-employed, you try to do something a bit different from what you are doing in the office. What I mean by that is that don't go and take your company's client and make them your client. That would be totally wrong. That would be everything lacking integrity, all right? Now, it's important that you find out what obtains. Some people are saying it, but there's no policy to back it. You don't run what people say, you run with all policies, and where you find that there's no clarity, all right, it's important that you speak to somebody that is a senior organization or somebody in HR to get clarification of how people that have gone to meet the CEO and the CEO says, as long as my job is done, I have no business what to do with your time, all right? So it's important that you get clarity where that is concerned, all right? In my experience, many of these policies were copied and not well thought through before being included in policy manual. So I want to challenge you that, you know, where the company has said things, go and maybe challenge them, you know, and explain and say, look, I'm doing this 
you know, one day of the week, my weekend, people are asking for it and all that. And in reality, and many companies are becoming more flexible because they realize that they cannot pay their staff for all, you know, and all the hours. I have a client who, for example, says that, you know, you can do private practice, but has even created a model where she says they can bring the pra private practice to the office and they split the profit 50-50. That works for both parties, all right? So you want to see what you can explore within your own context, all right? Where you find that still a conflict, you might want to consider running the employee business model model where you are working in a company, but you have a business model that you are not there entirely. So you might be um, uh, running that with a partnership with somebody who runs that business. There are different ways we'll talk about that when we get to the employee business owner model um, as we go along. So what are the benefits of the employee self-employed model? Of course, the obvious one is the ability to earn more money beyond the regular salary. Um, that's very, very critical. Not only that, it's a good strategy to eventually make a transition from being an employee to becoming a business owner, all right? And not only that, it's a good opportunity to learn the intricacies and the challenges of running a business or enterprise before you eventually step fully into it. I think that many people assume that because I've worked in a company for 10, 20 years, I understand how to run a business. That is the biggest mistake that many people make. That's why most a lot of businesses that's run by people that you know were employees fail a lot of time because there's so much assumption. You need to understand business before you really get into business, okay? Um, it also helps you to optimize your time as a working person, as I've said, you have your 95, you now have your 5 to 9, and that way you are more productive because really and truly, what makes the difference among men is the way to maximize the time. Of course, it gives you exposure to fundamentals of running an enterprise which better positions you as an entrepreneur. Now, and, and that's very important because even when you're working, you cannot begin to think like a business owner. Lots of people who work in that corner, they don't understand the business of the business they're working in. They just do their job and they go home. But let me say this to you, that one of the competencies required many times from um, ex, 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 people, uh, professionals that excel is their ability, ownership mindset, and that's entrepreneurship, right? So because you're running your own enterprise, you're able to bring that knowledge into the business and you cannot make contributions over and above even the job that you're doing. And you never know that might lead to a promotion or some other benefits, all right? It forces you to be disciplined in the use of your time and your resources. So your salary no longer is what you can spend arbitrarily. You need to be more focused about it and optimize that at the end of the day, all right? So that's the end of this quick session. I want to give you a few assignments. Of course, beyond what you've seen right now, the articles I've asked you to read, go and read them, start that tonight. I'm going to ask questions from that, um, about that as we, as we run the tennis seminar. But come up with your own idea. Um, that's if you, if you don't have one, start with one. That's very important. Don't say, I'm going to start three. I, I want to do pick making, HR or something. No, start with one, all right? Now go through this model with that idea and think through your idea to ensure that it's executable, all right? You will find out this not, then think of another idea. Some ideas have their time. Some ideas will not work because of your own realities. Except by thinking about changing your job, all right? But if you are not able to do that, then you want to make sure you work with ideas that work. Again, don't be very over ambitious. Oh, I'm earning 200,000 per month. I'm earning 3 million per month. I want to earn 17 million now because I'm now self-employed. It doesn't work that way, okay? And if you have questions, jot down your questions so that we can discuss them during the tennis seminar, and that will be announced to you shortly, all right? So on that note, um, we've come to the end of the class today. Thank you so much for listening. I trust that you've learned a few things. Again, we have the Facebook group. Feel free. I expect that. Post questions. There is a post group that we've known. It's even a secret group, so nobody really knows about it on Facebook. Post questions. Jimmy, I like what you said. However, I disagree. If you disagree with something, let's come up. I don't know everything. There are things you know that will have, have been, I mean, apply more to your own realities. Let's work together in that regard and build from there, right? So it's been a great one. We've just been 40 minutes today, and I trust it's been a valuable use of your time, right? So we'll meet at the tennis seminar, and then we'll now, the next session we're running like this is going to be the employee, business owner, and trust me, it's going to be exclusive, all right? Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of the day.